Hello, my name is Dr. Arsene Brown and I'm a Messianic believer. And uh, today we're going to have a look at something that um, has been pertinent recently. Um, some of you may remember that on the 19th of June, it was Father's Day. So what I thought we would do today is we'll go, we're going to have a look at the name of father in the Hebrew language and um, have a look at, um, at Abraham's name as well, because um, you may or may not know this, but Abraham's name contains um, the name father. In fact, Abram uh, contains the name the father. So we're going to have a look at Abram, Abraham, and we're also going to look at Abba. So, so we're looking, basically looking at three names in a way today uh, as, and see what we can glean, see what deeper revelation we can glean from them. And so I hope this teaching will be a blessing to you. So we're going to have a look at the name of God that Jesus came to reveal to us in John chapter 17, verse six, for those of you who have your Bibles. I have manifested your name. Jesus declares, I have manifested your name. So he came to manifest a new name for the Father, for, for God, um, and that is the Father. So instead of Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, etc., <clears throat> we now have Abba, Father. Okay. So for all of all, of course, of those who believe in Yeshua, this name is manifested too. Now, I have a question for you today. Who is the first Jew? Who is the first Jew? It should have been a Adam. Okay, it should have been Adam to reveal the first uh, true God to the whole world. It should have been, been Adam uh, as the first Jew. But um, he blew it, as we all well know. Um, so God was looking for someone else to reveal himself too and who should that person be but Abram why Abram though well Mishnah Jewish uh, inter interpretations of the Torah etc uh, the Mishnah tells us that the world was looking to many gods so we have polytheism so they were looking to many gods and they were looking to all of these gods to do something for them to actually do something for them but Abram was looking for the one true God. Yes, the one true God. As to what that creator God, what that creator God wanted him to do. Yes, so not looking for a God to do something for you, but looking for what God wants you to do, what God wants you to do for him. So God had pulled him out of the era of the Chaldeans because they were worshipping many different deities. And at that time, his name was Abram in the Hebrew, Avram, Avram. OK, so um, I've got, uh, for those of you that have the video, I've got um, the name Abram in the Hebrew. So it might look a little bit complicated, this sheet, but I'll go through and explain it to you. So Abram, so this um, word here, reading from right to left, because in Hebrew we, we read from right to left, is Avram, Avram. And the first two letters there is Aleph and Bet, uh, which is where we get alphabet from, Aleph, Bet, Bet. So Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and Bet is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And they spell the word Av. And Av means father in Hebrew. So those first two letters, Aleph and Bet, mean Av, father in Hebrew. Now, the rest of those letters there, Ram, Avram, okay, Ram, spells of uh, the word exalted. So literally speaking, um, Abram's first name was, before God changed it, was exalted father. Hmm. However, with his legal wife, Sarah, Sarah uh, they didn't have any children. 
So that's a bit strange, isn't it? Exalted father, but no children, not with his legal wife anyway. God reveals himself to Abram in Genesis chapter 17 as El Shaddai. Now that's a very interesting name in and of itself. We could do a whole study just on that particular name, El Shaddai. But it's actually the feminine name of God. So ladies that are listening, El Shaddai is the feminine name of God. And it literally means not Lord God Almighty as... You know, most male translators have translated it, but in the original Hebrew, it would literally translate God, El, Shad, breast, in the Hebrew is the word for breast, Shad, I, and that is my. So literally, God, my breast. Okay, so it speaks of our mother God, yes, as El Shaddai, as in the mother's breast. Now, what does a mother do? A mother births. A mother nurtures, a mother protects, a mother sustains and takes care of everything for the baby. So God was revealing himself to Abram here as, well, I am your mother God as well as your father God, because within Abram's name was father. Yes, have father. And then God changes his name, doesn't he? And so if we go back to our um card here we've got abram here and then i put in just up here where god uh inserted the hebrew letter hey hey now hey literally means breath of god if you notice with this letter there's a there's a, a gap there um between the lines so we've got one line one top line there one line going down and then a line on the other side, but it's not joined up to the, to the top line um, because we're speaking of the breath of God. And when you say the letter, hey, we need to use quite a bit of breath to say it. So a, a Avram became Avraham. OK, and God put in the hey there. Now, what is the significance of that? Well, the first two letters we have father, OK. Aleph, which is the ox, the first person of the Trinity, denoting strength. Um, and then we have Vet, Vet, which is the second person of the Trinity, as in Yeshua. And it's a picture of a house. So God's house, basically, in, in those two, two letters. And then we have Rish, which means chief, leader, prince. Okay. And now we have inserted hey, which means to behold, um, to reveal uh, the breath of God. So God's literally breathing his spirit into Abram to become Abraham. Okay, the breath of God, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, if you like, because it, the number of hey is five, which is the number of grace. Okay, and then we, we have at the end, we have mem so feet. That's a closed mem in the Hebrew alphabet, mem sofit. And mem is a, is a picture of a womb and it talks about birthing, okay? Also talks about trials and tribulations because without pain, nothing's going to be birthed. Yes, as a mother goes into labor, um, nothing can be birthed. So here we now have av raham, which now means father of many nations. So Av Avraham is now going to birth many nations. He's going to birth many, God's going to use him to birth many nations, okay? And then, of course, uh, um, Avraham then uh, makes a covenant of blood with God through circumcision. Yes, the whole of his, at the age of 99, he was, he was circumcised and the whole of his household, that was uh, all, all his family, all his relatives, and all of his servants, you know, they all had to be circumcised. So he's no longer exalted father. He's now father of many nations. Now, you'll notice that on this card, I've got some numbers here. So here we have 243. So that was, that's the gematria uh, for the name Av Avram. Okay, Avram. That's the, that's the gematria. That adds up to the number nine. The number nine in the in the Hebrew alphabet is the letter 
teth, which is a picture of a snake, okay, and which means to surround or to coil around. Okay, so it's it's insular in a way because you've got a Avram, which means exalted father, but you know, it's like he's surrounding himself. There's nothing being birthed here. But now we have 248 with the addition of the hay, which is the has the numerical value of five. We've now got 248. What's the significance of that? Okay. Well, 200, the Gamachi of 248, um, you know, we can add those numbers together and we get the number 14. So we have the number 10 there, which is Yod, which means we're talking about a divine work of God. So through Abraham, a divine work is going to be worked. And then we have the number four, which is Dalit Ador. Okay, now through this divine work, people are going to have to make a choice. Okay, God's going to use Abraham to um, make a choice to choose the one true God, or to stay with your polytheistic gods, many gods. Okay, so Dalit, the door always speaks of choice going through a door. Which door are you going to choose to go through? Door to life or door to death? Choice is yours. Okay, um, and you know, with the letter Hey, with God injecting the letter Hey into Abraham's name, to become Abraham, okay, we have behold, uh, means to behold, so what are we to behold here? We're to behold the father, of course. Okay, now the Mishnah tells us that um, Abraham had his tent open for, on four different sides. So, you know, you have, again, you have a picture of a door, you've got the top, the two lintels, and then the floor underneath, so there's a picture of four sides in a way so he had his tent open on all four directions north south east west picture of the cross yeah so um anybody that came to abraham's uh, tent abraham and sarah's tent it was like an oasis they would bless people with food and with water water for their camels etc and then the mishnah tells us that um you know, they would ask the question, well, how are we going to pay you for all of this, for the food and the water for us and for our camels, etc., our livestock? Um, and then Abraham would say to them, only thank your host, only have, thank your host. And they would think, oh, well, Abraham and Sarah, they're our hosts. And Abraham would say, no, God, the one true God, Elohim, creator God, one true God, Yahweh. Amen. So, in Judaism, the first mitzvot in Judaism is not Shema Israel, as you might think. Shema Israel, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord, He is one. But the number one mitzvot is to do what the Creator Elohim wants and not what you want. Hmm. So that's exactly what Abram wanted to do. He wanted to serve a God, um, not for what he could get out of that God, but for what he could do for, for that particular God. OK, so that's the first commandment, isn't it? To love God. Yes, to do what our Heavenly Father wants us to do, not what we want to get from him. So many Christians, you know, they go to their their shopping list, and they keep asking God, oh, do this for me, do that for me, blah, 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 all the rest of it. And it's a big, long shopping list. No, what does God want you to do? What can you do for the Lord? Yes, yeah, not the other way around. Yes, yeah, seek, seek God's face, not his hand. Yes, seek to have intimacy with your heavenly father, not for what your heavenly father can do for you all the time. You know, ask him what he would like you to do and thereby obey the first commandment, you know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. OK, and the Mishnah also adds this, uh, not to be intimidated by others. So Abram, he wasn't intimidated by all of the people surrounding him when he was in Ur of the Chaldeans. OK, and what they thought of him, of his monotheistic religion. You know, he was going to follow the one true God, 
and it didn't matter whether they laughed at him or shouted at him or jeered at him or whatever they did to him. He was going to be focused on the Lord and do what God wanted him to do. So don't allow others to hinder you. And very often the enemy will use your closest friends and family members to try to stop you from doing what God wants you to do. So don't allow that. Yes, you put the Lord first and foremost before anybody else, before your children, before your wife, your husband, before anybody else. God must always come first. So you must seek him. What does he want you to do? And don't allow others to hinder you in that. OK, now the second commandment in the mix, God, is to use your resources to help others. So whatever God has blessed to you, to use what he has blessed you, because we're all only stewards here. You know, people so often they cling on to their houses, their cars, their money, their savings, their whatever. Um, but the Lord tells us to love other people and to use our resources to help them. Thereby, you show the love of Elohim or you show the love of God, the one true God. And that's what Abraham and Sarah were doing. You know, they had an open door policy. Anybody that came to their tent, they would give them some water. They would give them some food. Um, you know, they would they would use their resources because. I mean, that's why Abraham became such a wealthy man. Because he's sort of forever giving. He's forever giving to other people. So he was forever re receiving a harvest from, from the Lord. Because he was doing exactly what God wanted him to do. He was a light and witness to the nations of the one true God. Yes? So keep, forget about getting. Think about giving. Who can I bless today? When you wake up in the morning, who can I bless today? You haven't got any money. It doesn't matter. You sow a smile, you know, when you go out. Be friendly, you know, phone up someone, ask them how they are, you know, chat to people. Whenever I go to the supermarket, if I can, I'll try and have a little conversation with the checkout lady. You know, how are you today? It just, just show the love of Jesus wherever you are. That, that's sowing. You know, you're sowing friendship seed. You're, you're sowing love. And in return, you'll reap a harvest. And our Heavenly Father sees what we do and he will reward us. Okay, so whatever you have in your hand, um, it may not be money, perhaps some food. Perhaps you can go and take a neighbor, you know, an elderly lady or somebody that, you know, has difficulty in cooking or they're struggling on their pension or whatever. Go and bless them with, with a nice meal or take them out for a meal even or invite them to your house for a meal. Yes, there's so many things that we can do. So the second mitzvot, help others. And that's the second commandment that Jesus gave to, to us, isn't it? Um, to love our neighbor as ourselves. What would you want your neighbor to do for you? Hmm? What would you like your neighbor to do for you? Well, then go and do that to them. You take the initiative. You go to them first. OK, so you've also fulfilled the Ten Commandments. In fulfilling these two commandments, you fulfill the Ten Commandments. The first three to love God. Yeah. Not to have any other gods, not to make any other other graven images to be focused on the one true God. And then the other seven is all about loving your neighbor. You know, not killing your neighbor, not committing adultery, not coveting your neighbor's goods, etc. Yeshua himself said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone, and take note of this, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, because there's many out there that will say, oh, yes, Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my saviour. They don't do the work. There's no fruit. You know, I mean, the devil's believing in Jesus and God and tremble. But are they doing the work of the Lord? No, they're completely against the work of the Lord. Yes. So Jesus himself says, not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only he or she that does the will of the father. OK, so you must be about your father's business. What is your father's business? What does your father want you to do? Yes. So. And Yeshua also says, and this, this ties in with the second mitzvot here, make to yourselves friends with unrighteous mammon. So 
So again, like Ab Abram and Sarah did, they used their resources to bless others with food, with water, um, to help whoever came to their tent in, in the desert there. Uh, they would help them and bless them and, and give food to them, etc. So make yourself friends with unrighteous mammon. What's unrighteous mammon? Well, that can be money, that can that could even be goods, you know, not just necessarily money, but goods, physical things. Help others. That's in Luke chapter 16, verse 9. Okay, and that's all about the unjust steward, that um, parable there. So do as Abraham did. Matthew 22, verses 37 to 40. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second uh, commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus added, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Because he didn't come, away, come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. Yes. In Yeshua's time, and we're going to go on to another name now. In Yeshua's time, they would have spoken Ar Aramaic, and Yeshua spoke Aramaic. So in Mark chapter 14, verse 36, we have Jesus using the Aramaic name for Father, and that is Abba, Abba, Abba. So Av becomes Abba in New Testament times. Um, and he says, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, it's not what I will, but what you will. The second mitzvot. Yes, what you want, Lord. Not what I want. What do you want? So he obeyed the first commandment and the mitzvot. So I have another um, word here in the Hebrew language. Um, that is Abba, Father. Okay. And here we have Aleph, Bet, and Aleph again. So what, does, what is that a picture of? So we've got three letters there. Oh, we can immediately think about the cross, can't we? When we think about the three, we can think about the cross, Jesus and the two thieves. Okay, Jesus on the cross. Um, so we can think about that. But we have Aleph, which is the first person of the Trinity, Bet, the second person of the Trinity, followed by Aleph again first person in the trinity so literally here we have a picture of god the father okay as the first person in the trinity surrounding god the son who is bet yes the second person of the trinity and bet is a picture of a house as well so god the father as aleph here surrounds not just yeshua but his house who's his house we are if we are true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, then we are part of the household of God, the household of faith. Yes, so God the Father surrounds us. When we are in Yeshua, God the Father surrounds us. Okay, so the Father encompasses the Son and his house. John chapter 1 verse 18. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the father. Again, this is a picture of Abba here. The bosom of the father, bet, vet, bet or vet, in the midst of Aleph, either side, in the bosom of the father. He has declared him. John 10, chapter 10, verse 30. I and my father are one, okay, one, okay. The father is in, verse, verse 37, the father is in me and I am in him. The Father is in me, and I'm in him. And they tried to stone him, didn't they? Yes, but they didn't succeed because his time was not, not, not there as yet. So the gematria of Abba is the number four because we have Aleph, one. So we've got two Alephs, so that's two. And then we've got, we've got Vet, uh, which is the num number three, the numerical value. Uh, sorry, no, numerical value two. So altogether, two plus one plus one is, for the mathematicians there, is the number four. So we have Dalit the door again. Um, Jesus said, John 14, verse nine, in response to Philip's question, show us the father, Jesus. Jesus replied, he who has seen me has seen the father. Okay. So we've got Dalit the door, is the numerical, the gematria of um, Ava. Okay, number, the number four. So 
but that's a picture of the Hebrew letter. The Dalit is the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and that's a picture of the door. Who is the door? Hmm. Yeshua said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one. So that gets rid of all the other religions out there. No one comes to the Father except through me, except through Yeshua. And John chapter 10, verses 7 and 9, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door. And then he says again, Jesus says again, I am the door of the sheep. John chapter 14, verse 23, if a man loves me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him. We will come into the door through the door of your heart. Yes, through the door of your heart. And we will come to him and we will make our abode with him. In other words, we will dwell with him. So what name did Jesus come into the world to manifest? There are many names of God, but as Yeshua said, back to John 17, verse 6, I have manifested your name. And finally, Jesus, Yeshua, told us to pray to the Father, didn't he? We're not, we don't pray to Jesus, we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. First and foremost, we pray to the Father. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. So you're worshipping the Lord. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Not mine, Lord, but yours. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. So, and then it goes on, give us our daily bread, which is a reference to the word of God. And Jesus, Yeshua, he is the bread of life. Yes, it was our daily bread. Yeah. Anyway, you can read that for yourself and meditate on it and uh, pray that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal more to you. So that's all we have time for today. So that's the end of our little, little teach today. I hope that's been a blessing to you. And uh, if you want more information or if you'd like to write to me, you can do so. My email is riveroflifeajb. AJB, that's my initials, Alison June Brown, River of Life, AJB at gmail.com. Okay, and if you want prayer, I can, you know, you can send in your prayer requests if you like. Um, and if you want to join our online Bible college, you can do that as well. Uh, and if you want any of my books, well, they're available on lulu.com. My most recent one was a God's Blueprint, Seven Prophetic Keys and the Bereshit Prophecy. But I've also got other books there that you might be interested in and that's from lulu.com okay and proceeds go to help our orphanages and schools in Africa and India so that's all we have time for so shalom from me god bless bye-bye